Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday morning. I'm so glad you've joined me. And uh, we are in a journey through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we are specifically in the Lenten season and on a, on a journey with Jesus to the cross. Hey, thanks so much for your encouragement and um, your comments, uh, especially on these Thursday morning devotions. Uh, I know I speak for Pastor Joan and Pastor Tyler. We really enjoy doing these and we love the feedback. It's something that we started uh, near the beginning of the pandemic, but we will continue uh, beyond the pandemic uh, because there's been so much value in it for us, but also people have uh, told us that they appreciate it. And, and uh, I'd like to see some other faces on the screen sharing what God is teaching them through the scriptures. So maybe down the road we can talk about that. But today I want you to turn to Mark chapter 9. We looked at Mark 9 on Sunday, the Transfiguration, and the week before we looked at Mark chapter 8. And, and the story of the Transfiguration of Jesus as the curtain is pulled back to reveal his, his glory and, and um, not only his identity as the Messiah, but his identity uh, as the Son of God. We have talked about this part of the Gospel of Mark being a hinge, being a pivot from the beginning of Mark where the identity of Jesus as the Messiah and the coming of the kingdom of God is seen in a cloudy sort of way. But now clarity is, is starting to emerge as we see Jesus as the suffering servant, that his mission as the Messiah is to reveal the glory of God through the cross and then the empty tomb. And uh, things get heightened, get magnified, get more serious. And you see that in the passage I'd like to read to you today. Mark 9, 43. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Well, this is a very uh, serious and seemingly violent passage. Uh, Self-violence at that. Jesus was the master of the hyperbole. In his teaching, he used many different techniques. And one of them was the idea of exaggeration. Now, exaggeration is not being dishonest, at least not in, in this case and in, in the way Jesus used it. Hyperbole is a tactic that good speakers use to draw attention to a misunderstood or difficult to understand reality. The idea of literally cutting your hand off is not the intention of Jesus' teaching. We understand that. This is also a lesson for all of Scripture that we need to look at each passage and the way it was spoken, written, how the original audience would receive it to understand whether or not it's literal and what message is actually being expressed before we try and apply it. And this is a very difficult task and it's something that is not just the job of a pastor or a preacher. It's, it's all of our responsibility as we open the pages of scripture. But the Holy Spirit illuminates the word of God so that we can understand. And, and so I would challenge and encourage you to make sure you remember that, that um, we take the Bible very seriously and believe that it is true. Um, but this passage is a good example of a time where we need to appreciate the literary device being used. So we have hyperbole. What is the difficult teaching Jesus is pointing us to if it's not actually cutting our hands off or poking our eyes out? Well, Jesus is trying to help us understand the seriousness of sin. Sin is rebellion against God. And we are all guilty of it. The Bible makes it very clear that all of humanity is guilty of rebelling against God. As a matter of fact, in the verse prior to the passage I just read, Jesus says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. In other words, if your sinfulness 
causes sinfulness in others, you might as well put a big rock around your neck and jump in the lake. It's the seriousness of sin Jesus is trying to teach his disciples because sin is an affront to a holy God. It is a lack of trust. It is, a, 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 it is an issue of pride. And it is a desire to have something more than the desire to have God in our lives. And by the way, the use of hell three different times in this passage is another way that we know Jesus is trying to express the significance and seriousness of sin. Because hell is separation from God. That's what hell on earth is, is when we are um, running away from God and experience life without the hope of God. And hell is an eternity of separation from God. This is our default setting as human beings, by the way. Paul, one of the, the great followers of Jesus in the history of the world, says in Romans 7, I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I want to do, which is to, to honor Jesus or not sin. Paul says, I struggle with sin. So this is an issue of not just sin, but sinfulness. It's a sin nature. And Jesus wants us to understand the seriousness of it so we can appreciate the significance of God's grace. We often talk about our need to respond to God's grace by confessing our sin, by, by asking Jesus to, to forgive us and come into our lives. But have you ever thought about the fact that God's grace is a response to our sinfulness? Think about that. Jesus said in an earlier passage in Matthew, the world says uh, an eye for an eye. You pluck out my eye, I pluck out your eye. That's justice. And Jesus says, no, no, no. We love our enemies and we forgive and pray for those that persecute us. And that's the model that God is setting. You have sinned. You have rebelled. You, you have run away and my response to all of that is grace god's love is poured out from the cross and this grace not only addresses sin it addresses sinfulness you know in the old testament if you sinned there were very strict regulations of the kind of sacrifice you would make to respond to your sin to offer a sacrifice to God for forgiveness. And I imagine that people saw this at times as a loophole. And, and in, in modern day, there are examples of this. I can sin as long as I have a plan for confession, for responding to, to that sin and taking care of it. But that's not the plan that Jesus has in store for us. It's not to keep responding to the individual sins. It's dealing with the sinfulness in our life. It's an undoing of that sin nature. Now, the Lenten season is a wonderful opportunity to address this because it invites us to look not at the sin in our lives, but our sinfulness. It should be pointed out that Jesus said to cut off your hand if it, if it was involved in uh, sin, if it caused uh, sinful behavior for you to stumble. Your hand is not sinful. Now, again, this is uh, hyperbolic, but it's not an issue of getting rid of the sin in our lives. Perhaps we need to get rid of the things in our lives that give us access to the sin. And Lent encourages us to do something called fasting. Now, fasting often has to do with food, but it could have to do with other things. Look, if you struggle with something, why not look at the source of that struggle the, the way that that struggle is accessible to you. If you struggle with what you watch online, then maybe fast from the internet or, or fast from your, your um, tablet for a season. If, if you struggle with the way that you spend your money, well, maybe fast from spending on uh, non-essentials or better yet, why not give more money during the Lenten season to the work of God or, or to needy uh, people in your life? so that you don't have the resources to spend in other ways. Maybe there's a person in your life, and they're not a bad person, but for whatever reason, your relationship is unhealthy. Maybe this Lenten season, you need to take a break from that relationship. 
In Hebrews chapter 12, it encourages us to throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles. In other words, not everything that's a problem in our life is sin itself or sinfulness, but there are things in our life that we need a break from or we need to get rid of altogether as we invite Jesus to help us deal with the sinfulness in our lives. Jesus wants us to understand the seriousness of sin so we can understand the significance of grace. And in that way, we will appreciate and experience the fullness of the cross as it addresses our sinfulness, as it expresses God's grace in a way that only the cross can. In Hebrews chapter 10, it tells us, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. This Lenten season and this passage and the plan for repent and believe that the kingdom of God has come near is all about drawing near to God. It's all about in the, in the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, drawing near to God and letting him deal with our sinfulness and replace it with his goodness and grace. And so my prayer for you today is that you would do just that, draw near to God and let the transaction take place of grace dealing with sinfulness and bringing you into beautiful relationship with your Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, um, this is an amazing thing. This is an amazing grace that we sing about. And it's through the power of the cross. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, who makes it all possible. I pray that we would take sin seriously as followers of you, as Christians, as a church, but we would not be intimidated by sin because the cross demonstrates your power and authority over sin and over death. And the empty tomb reminds us of the victory that is ours in Christ. I pray that each person today will be encouraged and be excited about the next steps in their relationship with you, but that they would take the next steps, whatever they may be, whether it's getting rid of sin or the things that hinder us, that lead to sin. Uh, God, encourage us, challenge us to do the thing that's right in front of us to help us draw near to you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, don't forget, March 14th, we will be inviting you to join us again in the building for Sunday morning worship. Just make sure you pre-register and um, look forward to seeing you online this coming Sunday. God bless.